and lift off of the Atlas V with Curiosity. On November 26, 2011, NASA launched the largest and most complex vehicle ever sent to another planet. In a few weeks, the Mars Science Laboratory, as it is called, and its one-ton Curiosity robotic rover will touch down on the Martian surface after almost nine months in space. This ambitious project has taken a decade of work by hundreds of NASA's best scientists and $2.5 billion. But the fate of the whole mission will come down to what NASA is calling seven minutes of terror a brand new automated seven minute long landing sequence. And this complex system of rockets, chutes, aerodynamic braking, and an unusual delivery device called a sky crane has never been attempted before on any planet. Devin Kipp has worked on the landing system for seven years. At around 10 p.m. Pacific time on August 5th, we'll, we'll encounter the, the atmosphere. We decelerate from 13,000 miles per hour to about 1,000 miles per hour to a position above Gale Crater where we want to deploy the parachute. And it's the largest supersonic parachute and strongest supersonic parachute that we've ever built. So we're slowly descending on the parachute until our altitude estimate is two kilometers above the surface. Uh, we then separate from the parachute and we have uh, essentially a large rocket backpack attached to the Curiosity rover. Uh, we call it the descent stage. And it flies to a point 20 meters above the surface. And then the, the rover, which has been nestled under this descent stage, gets separated on a series of three bridles, lowered, and the two bodies descend together until the rover touches the surface, and then it cuts these three bridles and the descent stage flies away, leaving the rover with six wheels on the ground, ready to start its surface mission. The rover weighs one ton and is about the size of a small SUV, but the Sky Crane landing system is designed to lower this Curiosity vehicle to the Martian soil ever so gently. Our touchdown velocity is about uh, one and a half miles per hour, 1.6 miles per hour. Pretty slow. It's pretty slow. You probably wouldn't damage your bumper if you hit another car at these speeds. Because of its distance from Earth, the entire process must run on automatic pilot. Mars will be actually quite far away from Earth. So a signal coming from the spacecraft would take 14 and a half minutes to get to us here at JPL. Um, so, for example, when we get the signal here on Earth that we've entered the atmosphere of Mars, we were, will already have been on the surface for seven and a half minutes, for better or worse, one way or the other, um, and we'll just have to wait to find out how things went. It will also be the most precise landing on Mars so far, and that will allow Curiosity to set down right at a potential gold mine of scientific information called the Gale Crater. Overall question is to figure out if this landing site where we're going, uh, and by extension Mars, ever was a habitable planet. And so we have a landing site in Gale Crater, uh, especially what we call Mount Sharp inside of Gale Crater. We have this hypothesis that Mount Sharp has captured these different transitions that mark the change from the early wet Mars towards the drier Mars. And by climbing this mountain, uh, we can not only piece together this history, uh, but determine whether any of those periods represent a habitable environment. This landing is a radical departure from the airbag cushions used to protect previous Mars rovers. We know the airbags. They've worked three times. People are comfortable with airbags. Uh, if we wanted to land this vehicle, which is much, much bigger uh, than the MER or Pathfinder landers, with airbags, those airbags would be so heavy and so big that we couldn't safely launch the thing on existing launch vehicles. So we had to do something new. The Sky Crane is, is the best, most reasonable approach that we have to landing something as large as the Curiosity rover. Missions Operation Manager Michael Watkins sees Sky Crane type landings as paving the way for future larger or even manned missions to Mars. We kind of think of the Sky Crane as being whatever you hang below the descent stage, if you want to hang a different rover or two rovers or a rover and a, and a, and a Mars ascent vehicle, we call it the MAV, 
uh, you know, the rocket to get back. We can land many things under the sky crane. So for the robotic program, we think it, it, it provided a lot of immediate feed, feed forward. For the manned program, we would certainly land something much, much larger. I'm not sure that the exact sky crane would be the system that you would scale up by a factor of 50, but it has lots of parts of it that will teach that landing system how to be more effective. But before the sky crane can be used on other missions, it must prove its worth this summer. The August landing, set for 3 p.m. local Martian time, will be the first full-scale test of this system. There is no single thing that scares me, but the aggregation of the hundreds of thousands of things that have to go right, that scares me. Every piece gets tested, and, and sometimes two or three pieces can get tested together, but the first time all of that gets put together into a single package is, is on August 5th at Mars. Um, and that's, that's the way it is. For the Wall Street Journal, I'm science writer Robert Lee Host.